What's better, a million dollars in an IRA or 850,000 in a brokerage account, a taxable account? It's gonna be fun to see. We're gonna go over this right now. So uh, let's dive into this. We're gonna use old Tim and Kim sample here. All right, this can be as simple as possible we can be. We're gonna go up to profile. We're gonna go to net worth, and you got 850,000 in. Uh, I guess Tim didn't have four three B, so we got 850,000 in Kim's taxable account. All right, so let's get rid of the word IRA. You can see taxable account. So Kim's got 850,000 in VTI in a taxable account. We're gonna assume a cost basis of 550, so she has a 300,000 uh, dollar capital gain, unrealized capital gain. We're gonna say they have 340,000 in a home. That's it. That's all they got. That's all they got. All right. Uh, we're going to say they're both 65 now and they're retired, all right? So they have no income other than, so their salaries, there's no salary coming in because they're retired. Other than Tim's Social Security, it won't be much, eighteen eighty four a month, and Kim's Social Security, twenty seven forty five a month. That's it, all right? That's all they got for income. They got no pensions, nothing, all right? So that's what they have. That is, so if you go up to investments and we go to tax allocation, all of their money is in a taxable, in terms of their liquid money, is in a taxable portfolio. All right, so check this out. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to retirement, and we're gonna see, go to cash flows, and we're gonna see what's their bill, what's, I just, you always wanna double check your cash flows. So they got expenses here, and their expenses are 76,000 a year, of, uh, because how did we get those expenses? We click on it. Uh, they're living on $5,000 a month, uh, they got six thousand dollars a year in property tax, and they got ten thousand dollars a year in healthcare. All right, so those are their expenses: seventy-six thousand bucks a year in expenses, all included. Now that does not include taxes. All right, so we go back to cash flows. Oops, cash flows. Taxes is its own line item, and we can see their tax rate here is not much. All right, so that's interesting. Huh? So we got income flows zero, so they have to pull seventy-six thousand nine hundred three from their portfolio in which to live on. Income flows zero. They're gonna have to pull seventy-eight thousand from their portfolio in which to live on. The following years they take social security, fifty-six thousand. All right, is their social security? Their expenses go up every year adjusted for inflation, and they're still pulling from their portfolio twenty-four thousand, twenty thousand, twenty thousand to offset and augment their social security. But what you can see is their taxes are very, very low. All right, they're not hardly paying anything in taxes. So they have sixty-four thousand coming in. They get eighty-four thousand going out which means they got to pull uh, 20,000 from their portfolio, which they're gonna have to pay a little bit of capital gain on, not much, which will be taxable as uh, capital gain rates. So not much in terms of taxes, all right? So look at that. So uh, they're pulling more and more from their portfolio. Hopefully the portfolio is growing, more and more and more, all right, until they die at 90. And here they got 105,000 coming in from Social Security. They got 147,000 going out. They got 4,000 of taxes. So that means they have 50, 152 of total outflows, which means they're gonna have to pull 46,000 from their social secure, uh, from their investments. All right, so let's go to analysis and we're gonna say they have a 92% probability of success. That's, that's perfectly fine. They're gonna leave 1.4 million of liquid assets to the kids, 1.4. And again, though, that is just the median amount. That dark blue vein right there is the median. 50% of the time they leave more, 50% of the time they leave less. Uh, you can see right here, 8% uh, of the time, it doesn't show here, but we know it from the previous screen, they, they have ran out of money, all right? Now, 5% of the time, uh, they had, they had uh, $6.4 million or more, all right? So 8% uh, of the time, they had $0. 5% of the time uh, or less, they had over $6.5 bucks. So that's a pretty wide berth there. Uh, but anyway, they're leaving a median amount, $1.41 million to their kids, all right? So, so far, so good. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go back to, go to tax, and we're going to say, Ooh, not much. Look at that. I mean, I can't remember where they live in California, I think. But anyway, look at that. I mean, that's just low. That's under 3%. So they're not paying much in taxes, man. And I bet that's not even true. But anyway, they're not paying much in tax. So let's go back to retirement. Um, we're going to see, yep, 92% probability of success. Looks good. And then we're going to go to uh, cash flows. And we're going to see, hit the RC totals here, and they're gonna pay 28,000 in total taxes right there, 28,000 in total tax. Let's see how much they leave if the average investment return, I think is what, 6% I got? Yeah, 6.5% right here, 
if they average that each and every year on a linear basis, which they won't, but just it's, you know, it'll show you at least how much they leave if we get average six and a half percent each year. It will go to cash flows and it will go to uh, accounts. Yeah, accounts. And oops, let's go to invested assets right here. No, we want to go to net worth. So they're going to leave 2.182 million in non qualified assets. So that's what they're going to leave to their heirs. 2.182 million, which the heirs will not pay tax on because of step up basis unless Steely Joe gets his way, which I just don't think he's going to. So that's pretty good stuff across the board. Lastly, we're going to go to a uh, summary expenses, healthcare. We're going to hit our thing. They're going to pay $568,000 of healthcare. Okay. So that's what their total cost of healthcare would be. They say, oh my goodness, you need $568,000 of every healthcare. Yeah, they also need $202,000 to cover the housing. They also need $2.0 to cover their living expense. So that whole thing's nuts. All right, so now let's change this over a little bit. Let's say they got a million dollars in uh, investment. We're going to make it an IRA for old Kim here. All right, we're going to save that guy. And we're going to make this a uh, investment. And let's go down to here. And we're going to have a million bucks in a divided by uh, one. 98.29 point they got 5043 shares in an IRA 5043 in an IRA all right so they're gonna have a million dollars now uh that they're gonna have as opposed to what we just saw so let's go to retirement and they're gonna have a 94 percent probability of success with the 1.5 uh 49 million so they're gonna in this case the median they're leaving is about a hundred and 35,000 more for the median. If we go to confidence, 6% um, of the time they run out of money. And then yeah, still about the same, 6.8 .8 million, 5% of the time they have at least 6.8 million, 6% of the time they run out of money. So that's pretty close, man. And not a huge variance there. So that's pretty good. All right. So it's right about the same. All right. So they're, they have a, a 15% 15, 15 less to start with. And they uh, leave about... Uh, you know, one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars more um, on the median. So if we go to let's go to tax. So let's check this out. Ooh, look at that now. So now their taxes are going up ten percent, ten percent, one percent to the state of California, ten, twelve, twelve, twelve. Oof, that begins to look pretty ugly, doesn't it? All right. So now let's go back to retirement, cash flows, and we're gonna hit taxes oh they're leaving 380 they're going to pay three hundred eighty seven thousand dollars in taxes yikes three hundred eighty seven thousand dollars in tax Woo, Nelly. and then let's see here how much they're going to pay in health care i think it was the same amount as before actually uh we want to go to expenses health care five six eight so the same amount of health care okay gotcha so that's uh now let's go to invested assets oops let me have a little accounts there we go I don't know if I mean it was invested assets or net worth. That's what it is. So here they're leaving 1.326 million in qualified assets to the kids and 979,000 in non-qualified assets. So here I don't have my, let's see, we'll say a million, they're leaving 2.326 million total, but this right here will be taxed as ordinary income to the heirs. So actually when all said and done, they're actually leaving less to the heirs from a pure tax perspective, from an after tax perspective. So not only do they pay 300,000, uh, well, 350,000 more in taxes over their life expectancy, even though they leave a little bit more, about 150,000 more to the heirs, net of taxes are actually leaving less, if that makes sense. Look at that, that's crazy, right? Hmm, that's, uh, that's nuts. All right, so now let's do this. Let's, uh, let's kill off old, uh, who we got, Tim and Kim. So let's kill off Kim, or Tim first. We got him down at 90. Her down at 90. Let's kill him off at 85. And let's watch the difference here. So we're going to kill him off at 85. All right, now let's look at tax. And you should see a jump. Yeah, look at that. There's a widow's tax trap right there. Interesting, huh? So now let's go to retirement cash flows. So old Tim is done at uh, 85. 93% probability of success. They're leaving 1.5. 1.512 million, all right, and we're going to go to confidence here. That's the median again. Let's go to confidence. Uh, 6.7 million on the high end. All right, gotcha. So that's about the same. Uh, let's go to cash flows, and we're going to hit uh, right here. 
and they'll leave 413,000 in tax, all right? 413,000 in taxes go to expenses. Healthcare will be 503 in healthcare, 503 in HC. And then we're gonna go to net worth and they're leaving 1.326 million and then 921 tax free. Okay, good. So you can see here, all right, 2.805. Interesting. All right, so now let's go to uh, change this. We're going to go to uh, profile. And we're going to go to investment. And we're going to make that 850. All right, boink. All right, so we got uh, 850,000. Divide by, by 198.29, uh, 4286, 4286, save that guy, change this to a taxable account, save that guy. All right, so they're leaving, uh, uh, fit, yeah, 15% less. Okay, gotcha. So now let's go to retirement, and let's see what we got, shall we? 92% uh, still, 1.3, yeah, same, almost the same thing, 1.37 million. So basically, still 150,000, um, about 150,000 less. All right, we go to confidence. Um, six point, yeah, pretty close in terms of the confidence ratios of the various uh, uh, standard deviations, whatnot. So that was pretty good. All right, so let's go to tax. Let's see what this looks like, shall we? Eh, right there. Hmm, interesting. So they got the widow's tax trap right there. We have to find out what's going on there. So basically no tax until old, uh, I keep wanting to say Doug, but uh, Tim dies. So let's take a look now. We're going to go to cash flows. And we're going to go to uh, right here. They pay 81000 in taxes. All right. 81 versus 413. A, again, about a 81 versus 413. So, you know, $300,000, 250 less in taxes here. Isn't that crazy? Let's go to net worth. Here they're leaving 2.12 million in a tax free account to the kids. So, again, they were leaving uh, 2.1, let's see, they were leaving before 1326 plus 921. Oops, 921. They were leaving. 2.247 to the kids and now they're leaving 2.12 but the 2.12 they're leaving now is completely taxed through the children under the current well, tax law whereas uh here they're leaving uh, a whole lot less because of net of taxes interesting huh that's cool all right so now let's go to expenses again and let's take a look at health care expenses health care is uh they're going to save about five, about thirty thousand dollars less on healthcare, and the reason for that is because there's no in the in the previous account they're going to be paying Irma Irma taxes. So let's take a look at the ten forty. What's the deal with the uh, what's the what's the deal? Why are they paying? Oh, I want to go to cash flow. So when he dies, their taxes go here. Why? So let's take a look at tax payments. Federal tax there. So that would be in year 2042. So let's take a look at the tax. 2042 is when the taxes go way up. So we're gonna look at 2041. All right, their social security uh, is $94,000. They got $31,000 of qualified dividends. Okay, good. Uh, which is basically tax free. All right, that looks all good. Sixty-seven thousand dollars of taxable income, but it's not really sixty-seven thousand because uh, the bulk of that is uh, qualified dividends and, and Social Security, which is a taxable. So basically, they pay no tax. Okay, now let's go to two thousand forty-two and see why that changes so much. So now we uh, oh there we go. So because of the loss of Social Security, it goes from ninety-four thousand. Uh, the next year when uh, Tim dies at 57000 So she loses about 40% of her Social Security, but she still has got a, all those dividends right there, 32000 of qualified dividends. Uh, and now she's a single taxpayer, which means more of that is subject to taxation because she's a single taxpayer. So look at that. That widow's tax trap costs her 100% or no, 1,000%, right? Increase in taxes right there. Uh Still, though, at the end of the day, that's still preferable to the other scenario, which is IRAs, because when the IRA kicks in, your taxes go through the roof, too. 
uh, because she's a single taxpayer with big required distributions. Anyway, so there's not, I mean, it's stuff you can do about that. You can avoid, uh, you know, you can have uh, no dividend stocks and all that. Look, but at the end of the day, it's still taxed. Those dividends are still taxed much more favorable. I mean, she's got $112,000 in income dues, and she's a single taxpayer, right? Actually, she's got more than her 1000 bucks. So that's just her AGI. She's got, uh, uh, let's see, uh, 32, uh, 112. Uh, so she got, you know, where they get that one to? I don't know. I have to figure that out. But I, it, what I'm trying to show you here is that there should, there, when she has no social, uh, IRAs, her tax rates are so much lower. Yes, they're going up here, right? Because we have that 112. Oh, capital gains. That's what's going to be. I bet if we see a Schedule D, it's going to see capital gain. Let's take a look. I bet that's what it is. You got to sell something. Yep, right there. Uh, long term capital gains. So she had to sell some of her portfolio in which to, to live on, and that's going to be the capital gain. Yep, that's that's what it was. Uh, so we have big capital gains there. But you know, at the end of the day, I wonder if it allows you to do specific identification here. I don't think it does. What you'd want to do is you want to do specific identification. I it basically identify the shares that you're going to sell so you don't have to pay those capital gains, if that makes sense. So I don't want to get in that here, but the point about this is to show you that. $850,000 in a taxable account is better than a million dollars in an IRA. Proven right there, man. Proving wrong. Proving wrong. I right, love to hear your comments. We'll see you.